have a reflection, it will have a bearing upon whatever you go through in life. And what, it's, what the gospel is simply designed to do is to put in perspective the things that happen to you in life. God isn't removing those things. He's not taking them out of your way. But He, is, he has provided for you to see you what? Through them. You see? And the thing that's, again, the Gospel helps put in perspective life's problems. That's why you should look to the Gospel, look to it to, uh, to help you work through what, marital problems, financial problems, uh, you name them, they're going to be there. they just flat out going to be there. I don't care if you got enough money. I mean, you can be the richest man in the world. You're going to have problems. It may not be a problem in the area of finances, but finances doesn't solve all your problems. If it did, you know, <laughs> you know, why is this country having such problems? You know, we're supposed to be one of the richest nations in the world. And yet we have, we're fraught with all kinds of problems in life. That's not the answer. The gospel is the answer. It puts in perspective. You understand, having marriage problems is not a big deal. You're going to have them. Paul tells you that up front. You're going to have them. I mean, you understand, you live in a sin curse world. For the sufferings of this present time, are not worthy to be compared with what? The glory that shall be revealed in us. What I'm trying to say to you again, the gospel helps you put in perspective all the problems and all the situation you go through in life. You understand? If, you know, if I don't always focus on the personal problems that people have and, and single them out, that's one of the reasons. Because you're, you can best deal with the problem. You, you best know what problem you're having in life than I do. But I know the answer to the problem is the gospel. And that's why, that's why my focus and my emphasis is getting the word out to get you to understand what the, the, the issues are in the gospel. And then you take that and you begin to, to put that, you know, again, what did Paul say? Not worthy to be what? To be compared. So what's the issue? It's about perspective. It's not about eradicating the problem. The problems are going to be there. You're not going to get rid of the problem. You can minimize their impact upon you. You can almost make their impact negligible by your understanding and putting them in perspective to what God has given you in Christ. But you best do be able to do that. Um, Romans 5. I mean, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 5. And i got to quit. Romans 8, 5. For they that are after the what? Flesh. Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, what? For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is? Life. To be spiritually minded is what? Life, Life and peace. Now again, take all the problems, whatever problem you have in life, put it alongside of the gospel. And what, what is, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, what is our hope? We know that the worst thing that could ever happen to us in life isn't going to affect us. Why? Because the dead in Christ shall what? Rise. The fashion of this world does what? Passes away. You begin, are you getting the point? Putting in, the gospel puts in perspective the problems of life. Look at Philippians 4, and then this is where we're going to have to quit. Philippians 4. Folks, you need to major in the gospel. You need to study. You need to absorb that into your understanding. And then you need to believe it. You simply need to believe the gospel. And all the problems of life are diminished by that. I don't care what they are. Uh, you talk about neighborhood problems. 
the things that goes on, you know, in neighborhoods, how people can get all out of whack about those kind of things. You need to deal with them. But what I'm saying, the impact that they have on you shouldn't have the kind of, they will have that kind of an impact if all that you saw in life, if, if your only pers the only perspective you had was just this life. You know what gives you the, you know what would empower you to deal with social problems in a way that would be fearless? It's the gospel. I mean, fear not him that is able to destroy the body, but fear him that is able to destroy both what? Body and soul. You know, if you talk, you know, it's the gospel that gives impetus though, that empowers that enables is the point. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. There's no way you can do that outside of the context of the Gospel. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The what? The Lord is at hand. Do you understand putting, putting in perspective I mean, you should live every day with that conscious thought, the Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for what? Nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall what? Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do you understand what we're talking about, by the way, when we talk about hope? You're talking about guarding your hearts and your mind. Keeping your hearts and your mind. Having some peace. Having some stability. Not coming unglued. Not being you know, disturbed in life. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? True. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. You, you, are you getting the point? Spiritually minded. Take the gospel message that God has given you. Think on those things. Let those things be a conscious daily part of your, your thought processes. Every day. I mean, when you talk about the Gospel, the death, the burial, and what? The resurrection. Do you believe He's alive? Do you believe He lived? Do you believe He's seated on the right hand of the Father? Do you believe He's coming back to receive you unto Himself? Then why do we allow the little petty things in life just totally just turn our lives upside down? You know what the answer is when you have problems like that? Somebody's not believing the gospel. So what's the issue? what's the answer? Give them the gospel. You know, instead of having the, the, the fights about the carnal things of the world, the carnal problems of life, give them the gospel. Now, I know they don't always want that. When you're having problems in life, that's the last thing that you think about. But you, you know, if you could, in a moment of, of, of turmoil, whatever the situation may be, stop and reflect for a moment. Hey, this is all going to pass away. I'm going to be resurrected one day. I'm going to be called up to meet the Lord in the air. All this is going to be behind me. It puts in perspective the problem. It teaches you how to deal with it. I mean, you can take life's problems. You know, sometimes you can, it puts you in a position where you can accept the wrong and go on. Just accept the wrong sometimes and go on. Why? Because all that's, as, it would, as one would say, ducks on a water, uh, water on a duck's back. <laughs> Trying to get my words out, right? But water on a duck's back. It, it's, it's, the gospel repels all of that. You see. Um, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, what? Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Paul is our example in that area for sure and you go back and you study his life, and you see a man, he says, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. You see, that's the attitude that you and I should have. That is what enables us 
to live life. It puts in perspective all the problems of life and it makes life that much more enjoyable, that much more endurable. You know, you endure those things. They're not put away. You endure them. But you've been enabled to endure. Why? Because of the hope of the gospel. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, that these truths will not fall upon deaf ears, that they will be meditated upon, that they will be uh, consciously stored up in the mentality of the soul and will be relied upon in the day-to-day -day living. We ask these things with prayer and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be dismissed um, over time and got an appointment. I got to beat it out of here, so I'm going to trust y'all to take care of uh, putting things up. So it makes everything in life. Oh, these here? Yeah, everything in life, man, in light of the gospel and the word of God, right the body. Yeah, and show you how to handle those things. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with your wife. You hear everybody. You, you hear, you know, a lot of people trying to get delivered from a lot of right. those things. And they ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You're going to be delivered through them. And you get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. That's that frustration. Oh, okay. That's that <laughs> That's frustrating, man. And uh, I'm going to do uh, my preaching. I think I'm going to do a thing. Uh, overcoming evil with good because that's what God is doing. His grace, when he should have destroyed Paul on the road, mm -hmm. he overcome that evil with good. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get through life, you know. And that's what the Word says. It's like pouring coals on your enemies when you've been good to them because right. they don't know how to react, you know. Right. Ex men expect to be frightened and you overcome evil with that good. Mm -hmm. Man. That's it. So, yeah, that's the gospel. Yep. As he was saying that, I said, well, you think about the gospel, how Christ dealt with people who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbed to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation. God came down in the flesh, humbled himself just to save his enemies. Right. Now, can we do that to other men? You know what I mean? Can we, when we're dealing with people, whether it's our wives, our friends, and the struggles in life and stuff, you can forgive. You know right. what I mean? All right. those things. Because if Christ can come down and do it, he's God. Mm -hmm. Why not us? You know, so mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's the gospel. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. That's good. And that'll help you deal with relationships. That, that's going to be what I'm preaching about. Because we live in this world, and like you said, you just have to constantly remind yourself of the gospel. That's what I do. That's yeah. how I get through life. That's how you get through. But it works. Uh -huh. Because you say, it ain't even worth it. Oh, it's going to pass away. Yeah, it's going to pass away. Yeah. And that's that peace of God that passes all of us. Because people say, well, why aren't you all riled up about, you know, this, that, and the other, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take care of this stuff. Okay, man. And then we'll see. Let's see. Because I have it.